Well, do you desire more of God's presence and revelation in your life? And how is accessing his presence the key to healing the wounds and empty places in your heart? Well, today's special guest is here to answer all these questions and share how we can develop even greater intimacy with our Heavenly Father. I love that. First joining me around the table is my dear friend, April Osteen Simons. Yeah, How are hello. you? I'm doing great. You Happy told me to a here. TSA agent watches yes, every ball. time in Houston. He <laughs> loves you. He loves the show as many people all over the world do. So men watch. Men watch? I love it. I love <laughs> a lot it. of men watch your show. Anna <laughs> Kendall, how are you? I'm excited about being here. We're going to enter into the Holy of Holies. <laughs> yes. And yes. I'm excited about our guest. I love it. You know, I always love it because you're always excited. Oh, I am. Yeah. <laughs> I know. She's so full of life. She, she is. Aww. She is. And you're, Thank if you. you don't mind saying, how many years young are you, Anna? 80. Oh, can you know. believe it? I can I even mind. believe it? She looks yes. so beautiful. Oh, Rebecca Lamb Weiss, how are you? I am just amazed. <laughs> Lord, let me be like this I at know. 80, please. <laughs> right. For sure. So for sure. bright. Well, you know, what it's about so this beautiful. subject, the presence of God, the tabernacle, that I know that's near and dear to this your heart. This is like my favorite subject. Yeah. <laughs> no, like it really is. I took a class in Bible school, it was about worship, and we spent a long time on the tabernacle because there is all this teaching there. Yeah. This is exactly what our guest is talking about. There's so much wisdom and knowledge and revelation to be gleaned. So I love that. It's great. All right. Cindy Murdoch, how are you? I'm great. Thank you. It's so good to see you and always have you right here beside me. Thank and you. we've been Aww. friends for we I don't think we say anymore because we were only five years <laughs> old when we started. Lost <laughs> like most, over, 35 years, and, over thirty five years. Over thirty five years. And you know, years. I, I am blessed that you're my bestie. I'm oh. so blessed and well, treasure that. It's always good to She's have you here. She's always by your side. Well, she is a pastor, <laughs> television host, best-selling author, and we're so excited to have her back at the table. Please welcome my dear friend, Paula Wise. Come on Yay. in here. Yay. <laughs> Hello, beautiful lady. <laughs> being at this table. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here today. You know, when we read about the tabernacle in the Old Testament, we can't help but wonder, what does all of this mean? And why was God so specific and detailed about every single part of it? Well, today, Paula is going to reveal the mystery behind the tabernacle as she shares about her new book, A Pathway to His Presence. Before we get into that, I love this. Boy, this is so timely. Yes for the season that we're in. Yeah. I mean, because some people watching, you're like, you know, this is going on and there's a war over here yeah. and, and going crazy over here. And, and, and it's just like, what, what do we do? And I always want to encourage you that John Paul Jackson used to tell me, he said, you know, we have been honored with the opportunity to be born at this time, right. yes. in this season, in all of time and eternity, God knew that he could trust us. So how much more important is it for us to have his presence with us every day? I think absolutely vital. I think yeah. literally it's our lifeline right now. Yeah. When you go, it, there, there's different seasons at times that you think, okay. And I said, it was easy kind of serving God in the 90s. Like, oh, it's a totally different time. You know, what would Jesus do? But, yeah. 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 Just, but um, it, it's so different now. And I don't know how we exist outside of his presence yeah. because the, the messages are bombarding us. The media is bombarding us. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness for Table Talk and Daystar and all the great programming that is a, a place of refuge for us and a place of strength and a place of healing because it's, it's God's place with His presence. Yeah. Yeah. And this book really is practical about outer court, inner court, holy of holies, but I take it from three dimensions of body, soul, soul and spirit. spirit. Yeah, talk a little that. bit about that because I know in the book you talk about so good. Uh, we have a body which is represented in the outer court a soul which is represented in the holy place, mm -hmm. and a spirit which is represented by the holy of holies. Break that down for us a little bit, Paula. Oh, I'd love to. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so, and I love this, Rebecca. I was so encouraged. I'm like, yes, they're teaching on the tabernacle. Yeah. Yeah. Because when I got saved, I, I went in to study about the tabernacle, 38 39 years ago, and it really showed me who Jesus is. I, I felt like I couldn't understand salvation and all the blessings that God had for me until I really understood God's in the details for a reason. Yes. Yeah. So when we look at this, 
there, there are several ways to look at the tabernacle. I mean, we could exhaust this forever. First, starting with it, it, God himself does 60 chapters on this. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Two That's chapters. Isn't that a lot? Yes. I mean, That's when you lot. start you know, talking 60 <laughs> chapters, Exodus all the way to Hebrews, Old Testament, New mm -hmm. Testament, mm -hmm. two chapters on creation. Mm -hmm. So two chapters on the whole world being created and 60 chapters on constructing this tabernacle. That must mean something. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. And my, I mean, it's like, hello, I'm trying to send you a message here. Yeah. And that message is without age. So when we get into the Holy of Holies, there's only one way to be there. Flesh cannot dwell there. You know, our our intellect is not what God is relating to in any, any way like that. The only, the, the reason for our spirit, the function of our spirit is to relate to God. Mm -hmm. John chapter 4, those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. All of us know that um, when we're in spirit, you're inspired, you're, it's where peace is, it's where joy is, it's where healing is, it's where wholeness, every good thing we want out of Bunce life. So the Holy of Holies ultimately is where we become, when I say perfected, not like we, we made it in that mm -hmm. sense. It, it's teleos in the Greek, mm -hmm. mature. You come to that place of, mm -hmm. of true understanding and, and uh, revelation. So it's, it's a place of worship. Mm -hmm. It's a place of revelation. It's a place of um, communion. And well, it's interesting because the surrender happens actually in that very first place. So the outer court's yes. our body. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the surrender happens in the very first place of the bronze altar. Yep. And I'll, I'd love to get into each of those, Joni, when talk, and then we go to the laver, which is really the washing of his word. Mm -hmm. Then we get into that. Rebecca's <laughs> like, she knows her tabernacle. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Memories here. And like, it's a mirror, right? Like it's where you can, the word of God, you can see yourself through it. So you can't even enter, I, one of the things my teacher said, he's like, you can't even enter the holy place, which is where the table is, where you have communion with Jesus, That's exactly he says right. if you're not surrendered and you're not washed by right. his word Woo. first. Yeah, yeah. you know, I know you and I are thinking of the song, Now I Can Go Into the oh. Holy of Holies. I knew there was a song. Yeah. I can kneel, <laughs> you know, and make my petitions known. Yeah. But it, it wasn't until that veil was torn yes. from the top to the bottom and it, it was God who mm -hmm. tore it through the sacrifice of his son. And made a way. And it's interesting because what happens is God really starts in the Holy of Holies and comes out to us. We have to yeah. start on the outside and go to him. It's the exact opposite. Yeah. But it's all to get to his presence. So like Rebecca was saying, so you look at the altar, there's four sides. She's right. It's about, it's um, polished bronze. Now bronze um, is very different because most of the items are made of gold. Some are beaten gold. Some are pure gold. Pure gold is deity. Beaten gold is going to be a different. So all these details matter because it means the deity of uh, man's workmanship. So when we get to that holy place, we'll, we'll go there. But to get on that altar, there are four different sides to it. Represents the forgiveness of sin, carnal man dying, etc. So Jesus became the sacrificial lamb. So in the Old Testament, they would put a lamb up or a, an animal and they'd slaughter it. When we really recognize the importance of sacrifice, that mm -hmm. something had to die, yeah. something. And, so uh, precious. It, yeah. it, it, something it, so precious. Amen. So when we think about that in the Old Testament, it was an animal that died, right? right? Mm -hmm. Because the penalty of sin is death. When we think that no longer do we, even uh, people had to die in the Old mm -hmm. Testament. It wasn't just animals. Mm -hmm. So when we think that the penalty of sin, of missing the mark, of uh, transgressing against God is death, and we get this vivid picture, we no longer have to die. Yeah. We, we should mm -hmm. have died. Yeah. We should have been the one yeah. that was crucified or slaughtered, mm -hmm. but because that, that rebel had to be executed. But what happens is, what does God require? Romans chapter 12. Mm -hmm. You present yourself yes. a living sacrifice. Living sacrifice yeah. yes. What is holy and acceptable and pleasing to God, mm -hmm. which um, then we can prove the will of God, right? So we, we have to be conformed to, not conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of minds, our minds. So every day God wants us to put our body on that altar. Mm -hmm. So it starts with our body. God wants our flesh crucified on that altar. You don't ever get to the presence of God, taste the goodness, have the abundance of life that God wants you to experience 
experience without that I deny myself, mm -hmm. I so surrender, yes. I crucify this flesh. Paul said it was a daily mm -hmm. practice. And not only we were we forgiven, and I want you to continue that, but it just came to me so clear. Uh, not only were we forgiven to be able to do that, it's, but I also saw people watching who just have unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing. You can't expect to go into the Holy right. of Holies yeah. with unforgiveness. People say, well, no, I prayed the prayer. He's forgiven me. But you're like holding offenses yes. that are keeping you. I mean, it's affecting your daily life. Mm -hmm. It's affecting your ministry. It's affecting the presence of God in your life. You wonder why you can't sleep at night. I'm, I'm telling you, this is something the Lord is saying, I want you to deal with yeah. because I want to bring you to that place where we can meet together. And I, you think about the body of Christ, how important is it that we forgive yes. and that we come together? Huge, because Joni, uh, and that's so spot on that God says, if you hold or retain a man's sin against him, mm -hmm. God will retain that man, you, your sin, that sin yes. against you. And the same that thing with a judgment. Motivator. Yeah. yeah, and the I, same thing with judgment. Yes. I mean, we are not allowed to judge somebody else's heart. So Only God can do that. Th think about this. We're, we think that God's hearing all our prayers, right? Yeah. We just make this automatic assumption. But he says, if you retain that sin yeah. against mm -hmm. him and don't forgive, I'll retain against you. So God tells us, don't even bring your gift to the altar. Don't even exactly. try to get in my presence. Right. Yeah, right. Because what he's saying, so we're praying and praying and praying and never seeing the results because mm -hmm. it could be, I go as simple, this isn't always simple, yeah. but as really, truly releasing. It doesn't mean you feel it, you will it. Yeah. Yeah. You have to yeah. will sometimes. Sometimes you, you still have hurt, but we, we want to get you into that yeah. yes. holy of holy yes. so that hurt can be yes. healed. Yes. Yes. But, but if you don't go to that altar and release that unforgiveness, you can never progress because it's a prescribed way that is given by God. Mm -hmm. This isn't Paul's idea or any of ours or our professors right. or theologians. This is God's way right. into right. the holy of holy. So if we don't forgive, then on the basis of the blood of Jesus, he hears and answers our prayers, but not, he retains, we cannot have connection with him if we're still retained in sin. Yeah. So the first I'm released from sin is the forgiveness of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ by accepting, mm -hmm. but releasing other people, yes, just exactly. like he released us. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you think, it's not It's not about religion, it's about relationship. Yeah. You can't work your way into that. No. Some people think that. Some people think, you know, I have to do this, I have to do that, but it's not about religion, is it? 100%. Religion is man's best idea to get to God. Mm. This is God's idea to get yeah. to him, yeah. you know? And, and, and their greatest attempt, they try, but God says, yeah. here's how you do so, it. So like you said in Romans 12, we fall in that model where we put our entire lives on that altar and we surrender everything to him. So that's where God was saying in Hebrews 8 and 9 and chapter 11 and 12, uh, Rebecca, and then we get to progress. So we go yeah. to the labor the next thing, which mm -hmm. is a really cool thing because we it was made with the, this posh bronze out of the women, because the women had bronze mirrors. So it wasn't mm -hmm. like our glass mirrors out of their bronze mirrors that were the worshiping women. Not any women. It was the worshiping women of Israel that gave up their bronze mirrors. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, all these details matter. So when we walk by the labor to wash our hands in, the, the first thing we see is we can see ourselves. So James tells us that the word is a mirror, that it rightly divides, it judges us, etc. We do our Sunday duty of just get running in and get run by the word and go home and think we did it. Religion, man's yeah, best right. way to get to God. Right. But God says, I want you in my word because my word is washing away all the stuff. It's the cleansing of the word, the word sanctifying it. It washes our soul. It's literally living yeah. and yes, breathing. It is. it is the only book in the world on. that lives and breathes and is alive. Mm -hmm. It's so true. Yeah. It's active, it's sharp, it yeah. pierces. It's the only thing that can divide between the spirit and the soul. Because the soul is where we get all this unforgiveness, guilt, condemnation, yeah. wrong thinking, yep. everything else. Yeah. And, and so the word doesn't return void. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God, he doesn't separate. So the second thing with the word and the labor is it, it's our judge, it judges us. 
us. And then as we, we get washed, then it cleanses us. Yeah. It sets us apart. Mm -hmm. And so as we get through that labor, now we're still on the outside. So we can look at three different divisions because those divisions between outer court, inner court, and holy of holies, you can look at as different light. So on the outside, there's natural light. So if you stay in the outer court, you're going to live in the natural man always. Mm -hmm. In the inner court, there is artificial light by the, the candle stand, the lamp stand. The so see, Rebecca's <laughs> like, this is good. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so by that, there's partial light, and that's man-made light. And so we, we are still working within our, our self. But when you get into the Holy of Holies, the light is not artificial. It's not the natural. It is the Shekinah. It's God's glory. It's where yeah. God dwells. And that's the light we want to walk in, God's presence, yes. his dwelling. So, so once I pass through, there's the first curtain. Now, that represents Jesus' resurrection. So because he's resurrected, now I can go into that inner court. Ooh. Yes. And that's where we have three different things. We've got the... We had to use a man before, now we can go. Exactly. Yeah. We had to use a priest. Yes. Come yes. on. And so <laughs> this is where the, we have three different um, pieces of furniture, and they represent the will mm -hmm. and the intellect, the mind, and the emotions. And then we go to that second curtain and get into the very holy of holies. But again, it's God's prescribed way. I was preaching the series for like six months to nine months, and here I am going, like I'm almost to the holy of holies, and I just had lost my cookies one day. I know no one else does that ever. And I'm like, I'm back on the outer court. You know? yeah. so I'm, I'm like, back out here. I'm yeah. back out here. <laughs> Let me throw myself back on the altar. It's like a continual process. It's I a think continual your whole life. process yeah. to yeah. daily process. It's a daily, well, and that is like just when I, you know, I, was, I, I pray That is a sanctification that continues. Yes. It's not just a one-time right. work. It, exactly. It's yeah. not, and that yeah. was the whole thing is that I realized like, man, I was feeling really, um, great about like I just because I've really spent a lot of time in the presence of God yeah. with this. We are human and so yes. it is a process it that is. we have to continue working on allowing the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to sanctify that those parts so of us. So it's just falling on that altar it, just keep well, because, falling yeah. on well, there. It, really, it is but it, what's so great is this is such a clear pathway as I think you read the book or study it like Rebecca or the rest of mm -hmm. us have here. If for me as a young believer when I really, uh, someone came in they were teaching and I just, I joined a class and everything. It laid such a strong foundation in me because we do have those things that I didn't go oh there's no hope for me. Oh there's no pathway. Oh, I've been locked out. I had a real clear theological understanding yeah. of what God has done and how to walk through that over and over again. When <laughs> I study the tabernacle, for me, the greatest thing it produces is a deeper desire for communion with God yes. and an awareness of his holiness. Yes. Yes. And I think if the church needs something right now, boy, do we need yeah. to return yes. to yeah. the holiness of God. Yes. And I think God is working. The crazier our world world gets, like you mm -hmm. said, Jenny, when we came on war here, you know, legislation doing this, talking about mm -hmm. killing a child, I call it killing because it is, mm -hmm. 28 days after its birth. Mm -hmm. We yeah. go, how can, how do we get here? How can we yeah. call yeah. little boys, girls, girls, and little girls, boys? We're like, so far from the like, design and yeah. plans yeah. that God had for our world. The, the holiness may be, you know, I mean, it's attractive, it's attractive. Yes. It's like, God, I, I want to be like yeah. you. I want to be, it's safe. It's beautiful. Right. It, it, and it's whole. So, it's whole. There Wholeness. you go. There's the word. <laughs> yeah. well, and I think that divine uh, revelation of every step to take, every word to speak, uh, strategy yeah. to lead us in everything that we're facing in this world I think in, that is what we experience. Well, we've got to have his presence to do that. Like for people who are watching right now, Paul, and they say like, I listen to what you're saying. It's so interesting. I want to get Paul's book. I want to read it. But like here, I'm sitting here. How do I enter into the Holy of Holies? How can I experience his presence in a new yes. way? So first off, by the blood of Jesus is the most simple way. Mm -hmm. And I go, but this pathway is pretty clear that it's like, because it is the labor, which is the word. Uh, Jesus is the word and receiving that, but receiving the forgiveness of sins, yes. going into that holy place, which we look at the table she bread, the altar. We look at the lampstand. That is our mind, will, and emotions that, again, have to be presented to God, crucified. Mm -hmm. Because then you go through that second curtain and there's so much depth and teaching to that 
but it represents the ascension. Now we're going into a very high and a very holy place. You cannot go in with sin. When we look, only the high priest could go in. He had to do cleansing for himself, but blood on given a sacrificial there were so many things. If he went in with sin, we know that he dropped over dead. Yeah, right. So yes. you can't enter God's presence. Um, there is this, you know, I think we're just conditioned to like almost microwave Christianity. Yeah. Like, oh, forgive 100%. me, let me go in. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. not like that. Yeah. Yeah. This is God. And it's, yes. yes, he wants you and he's embracing you and he's sitting with you at the well and saying, I am the living water. Mm -hmm. And he's coming to you and he's, he loves you and he cares about you. But this is not to be done irreverently. Right. either. Yeah. Talking right. about God, it's not like he's a sugar daddy or Santa Claus. It's like taking God. communion. Yes. I mean, well, even that is, exactly. you know, the, the reverence. Yes. Reverence. That's what I feel like we've lost, the reverence yes. for God. So and, and the so. reverential fear yeah. And I think, too, I, if I recall, you can tell me if I'm wrong, to get into the, I think for the priest to get into the Holy of Holies, they, didn't they have to kneel and go down? Yes. Like underneath something? Like, you couldn't just walk straight you in? You didn't go straight in. And that's why it was, it, it goes into, it narrows. It becomes a 10 by 10 by 10. So so everything you're like, why acacia wood, iron, why overlaid like this? So even the art there is yeah. acacia wood, which means iron wood. It's strong, but that represents manhood. But it's overlaid with gold. That represents deity. Mm -hmm. So God is taking our, our humanity when we come, because at the top of that is the mercy seat. And that's mm -hmm. ultimately where we're getting about in Hebrews. This is a copy and a shadow. Sin didn't start here on the earth. Yeah. It started in heaven. Satan rebelled. Yeah. Jesus would have to take the, his mm -hmm. blood, not any blood, his blood, and put it on that altar, on the mercy seat. And because of that blood, which is active, like you said, because of that blood, the blood is crying out on my behalf, on yes. all of our behalf. Yes. So when I come to him and I'm like, Father, forgive me. Or when I pray on the basis of the blood of Jesus, it's that blood on mercy. So the blood releases the mercy of God, yeah. the mercy, yeah. the mercy, yes. the mercy, the yes. mercy. Yes. So whatever I did yesterday or 10 minutes ago, if there's truly a repentant yeah. heart yes. and I'm like, not just, I'm sorry I got caught, but God help yeah. me, yes. you know, yes. forgive yes. me, yes. change me. Yep. I'm running. And I'm, I'm running. running. And I'm running it. to the mercy seat. Amen. Come on. Yes. <laughs> or I think about that. Every, I'm thinking of a million songs as she's yeah, talking. I His know. blood is still oh, flowing. Yes. The Coovers used to sing oh, that. Yes. His blood is still flowing. I mean, it's so powerful. What, where is your place, if you will, I mean, for like, to break it down in simple terms for, maybe we can talk with everyone about it for just a second, but your place where you meet God. I mean, sometimes you have mm -hmm. a closet, you have a, a room, you have a, 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 a place, and you, really you can meet him anywhere, but where, where is your secret place? I have a, um, it's not really an office, but I kind of call it my office. It's more like my little lounge, but it's my God room. It's yeah. all my books, it's my Bible, it's Aww. my notebooks and my journals. And it is like, I mean, even my own family, they love me that they like tiptoe in. <laughs> Everyone except for the dog knows, don't come in. You know? yeah, yeah. And, and because that's Wait, my- Wait, this is the place. Yeah, this is my place, it's yes. my spot. And I didn't always have a room before, but I remember hearing someone saying, you need to designate a yes. spot to meet with God. Mm -hmm. And even if I had just a closet because mm -hmm. I was in a one bedroom apartment or a trailer, like I had a place. Yes. And I think that's important. That's important, it really is. Cindy, where's your place? I have a closet. I knew you were gonna say <laughs> that. I know about your closet. And, and you know, every time I go in there, cause it's so small, but it's the only place I had so there are clothes on this one little side and on this wall are pictures of my family and yeah. my Bible and all that. But when I walk in there, it's almost like I, I always hear this little whisper, you know this is where I meet you. Oh, you know yeah. this is where we meet. I feel that when I walk in there just to get clothes out I love that. of there. Yeah. You know, I have, well, I have two places. Um, when Marcus was alive, I, I went to the guest bedroom because it was kind of off far and I knew nobody was going to walk in on me. It was going to shut the door. It was, it was my place. Yeah. And now that I've got the whole house, so <laughs> I can really meet him anywhere. And I yeah. kind of do more in the den. There's a place on the couch yeah. where I read my devotional. It's nothing but me and Lola the cat in the morning. So that's my place. Where's I had a place? closet. I, I had a special closet at your house. I had this room. You mean and then it I, used to be your house too. I know. Well, yeah. I used to live there. I lived with mom until I got married at like 25 or 26, however old I was. And there was a room. And then there was like this only, and my room was the only one that had it. It was like designated for me. That. Yeah. It was like a little shoe closet and had a window. But now what I do is one of my favorite places 
is actually in Asher's room because I have that recliner where I did all those feedings, all those many times reading books. Yeah. But I like looking out the window and looking at the trees. Yeah. Um, so that's your place now. That's one of my places, yeah. But I'm kind of like you. When you're a mom, you have to be kind of flexed. Yeah. Because yeah. your house is... <laughs> and God will move with you. Yeah. 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 Where's your place, Anna? Mine's in the den looking out on the yard and the trees. See, and isn't stuff. that yes. nice, the trees? It I is. I like to look it out. Is. Okay, April. Mine's in my room with coffee and a blanket. Coffee. Yes. The best. Got to have a coffee <laughs> yeah. and a blanket. Oh, blanket. But you know, that's what I want to encourage people. I mean, we're talking about all of this, but I think it's important, first off, to kind of take a good look at yourself and, you know, and the Holy Spirit will show you if there's anything that's kind of blocking yeah. the presence of God in your life. And just ask the Lord, you know, God, if there's anything, create in me yes. a clean heart and oh, yes. renew Amen. my mind. And, mm -hmm. and Father, if there's anything you need to show me, show me yeah. now. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, when we're just honest with God and talking about those things, yes. He will meet us, won't He? Always. Yes. Yeah. Always. And yes. that's what he says. He's standing at that door and he wants us to come. He does. Yes. He wants us and he yes. longs for us. I mean, God himself told, tells us, he says, make me a sanctuary that I may dwell. Yes. God's always wanted to dwell, which means to habitat. He doesn't just want yes. to visit us. He wants mm -hmm. to, he's intertwined yeah. with us. Mm -hmm. Think yes. about that. And Amen. I would really encourage people to get this and read this yes. teaching because I consciously go through this still to this day yeah. in yeah. my quiet times and stuff and in my life. Oh, I mean, so you apply good. it to yes. your whole life and it is, it's a game changer. So it will make such a difference. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, can't believe it, but we're out of time. <laughs> oh. But Paula, you'll come back and we'll <laughs> yes. go into more in depth and I you'll also kind of keep us up on what's going on in the world as yes. you know love it. And uh, we will definitely have her back. But um, I know that more than anything, God wants your heart mm -hmm. and he wants to spend time with you. He really does. Like he is all about relationship. And I'll tell you what, if you can ever just be still for a minute in this crazy world, put your phone down. Like we all carry it around. Like it's, you know, the most important thing in life, <laughs> put it down and get, get in a, in a, in a quiet place and just say, okay, God, I'm, I'm ready to listen to what you have to say. Setting aside that time for the Lord is so worth it because it's in this place yes. that he's going to fill your heart with love. He's going to refresh you. He's going to give you insight and revelation on how to handle different situations in your life. And uh, so I think it's really, really important. And I really believe that word that I gave earlier, you know who you are and um, God has been kind of knocking on your door and you're, you're kind of ready to surrender some of that offense that you've carried for so long against people uh, that you may not understand, but God is saying, hey, you know, it, it's up to me to judge people's hearts, not you. Mm -hmm. You just need to look at your own heart. Well, as always, if you need prayer, that's why that toll-free number's on the screen. People call from all over the world. We have wonderful prayer partners that are standing by, always ready to pray with you. You can go to daystar.com, click on prayer, submit your prayer request. That way we pray over all the prayer requests that come into Daystar. If you do happen to call and you get a, a recording, leave your name and number. I promise you a real person will call you back. I want to thank my friend Paula for joining us at the table today, yes. sharing about her new book, A Pathway to His Presence. Be sure to pick up a copy. I know it will be a blessing to you. And for more on her ministry, you can visit her at paulawhite.org. Also remember to watch her program, Paula Today, right here on Daystar, Monday through Friday at 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't forget to join the conversation by leaving us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, or YouTube. Uh, we'd love to hear how this Table Talk has touched your life. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, ladies. Thank right. you for sharing. Hey, hey, I'm excited about your next session with the Lord. I believe it's going to be amazing. And I tell you what, when He meets you there and when He begins to talk to you, I want to hear what He's been saying to you. Well, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.